Welcome to the latest edition of Unscripted Faith. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert alongside Angela Madden. We're so glad to have you all today. Listen, this is going to be a little bit of a different Unscripted Faith today because we're going to talk to you about a little bit of a lower note. What happens when life happens and we don't see the goodness in it? Dealing with grief, loss, dealing with tragedy when it comes our way and how we process those things. But listen, the great news is we're always going to leave you on a high note. So if you're battling with grief or you know someone is battling with grief or walking through a dying process, which can be difficult, this show is just for you. You know, Jay, grief is very much a part of life, whether it be physical death that we're grappling with or emotional, you know, loss of dreams or expectations. Um, but today I'm excited because we have an opportunity to sit down with the first lady of yeah. Jesus music and get to hear a little bit of her story of grief um, and, and really listen to her music that is going to inspire all of us. You know, Nancy Honeytree Miller, or just Honeytree, as many of her fans know, uh, is a pioneer and singer songwriter of Jesus music. She's one of the few female solo artists to emerge in the Jesus revolution of the 1970s, and she's still creating new songs after 50 plus years of ministry. That is commendable. She joins us now to share more about the meaning behind her music. Honeytree, it is a pleasure to have you on Unscripted you. Faith. Praise the Lord. Good yes. to be with you. Love you. Already getting you know to what? talk to you. We're like, we like her. We I like know. Honey Tree. Yeah, listen, we were talking before. You're using words like dope. You call me bro. <laughs> yes. I said, I love it. I said, man, I can roll with her. I said, this is going to be so <laughs> yes. much fun. I want a hippie, always a hippie. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you are definitely not a stranger to Cornerstone Television Network. Yeah. And yeah. the last time you were here, uh, your husband was being interviewed, JR. Yes, and he was about right here. Talking yeah. about reconciliation, mm -hmm. and that was back, we think, around like 2017. 2017. Think, along that line. But since then, things have changed a little bit. Yes. Well, JR went to be with the Lord in May of 2018. And, uh, of course, that was the biggest change in life, the greatest challenge and trauma and total change of everything that I had ever experienced and uh, started me on the grief process. And so that is part of what ministry is about for me now because the Lord is helping me to have a healthy grief process and also to be able to share that with others, just like it says in 2 Corinthians 1, uh, verses three and four, that God's the God of all consolation. He heals our, all our tribulations so that we can help other people that are in any kind of affliction. And so that's what's happening musically in my life these mm -hmm. days. And so you talked about the healthy grief process mm -hmm. as well. Um, a lot of people have unhealthy processes mm -hmm. and he had congestive heart failure. So there's yes. a process, you know, I don't know if it matters or not, but I, if people would ask like, if you had someone that died immediately, mm -hmm or would you have them mm -hmm. die through a process? Wow. My mother's name is Nancy, mm -hmm. uh, who passed away in 2007, and she had breast cancer, and it was a long two-year mm -hmm. journey. Yeah. So a lot of times we deal with death, but we don't deal with dying. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you had to walk through that process yeah. of watching him uh, more or less die. How was that journey for you? Well, very difficult, because my husband was a man of faith. I mean, you know, he went to Rhema Bible College. I mean, he was, uh, he was always positive and he was very active, still in full-time employment when he passed away. And he had all kinds of plans. He was not going to die. Wow. And so, uh, but as his wife, I could see his physical changes. He was getting thinner. His, you know, color was changing. Yeah. His voice was changing. And I knew that, you know, his heart was getting weaker and weaker. And so, um, you know, it's a battle because as a Christian, you're, you know, yes. you're praying for a yes. miracle. Yes. And sometimes you don't get the one that you ask for. And when, you know, I, I came to peace that my husband lived his ordained days, as it says in Psalm 139, that the days that were ordained for me were written in the book before there was any of them. And so, 
the Lord gave me peace that he lived his ordained days. But he was a fighter. You know, he would have gone on if he could have. Were you battling with that? Yes, because, absolutely. Oh, because, I mean, it sounds like he's going to this thing like, it's all good, yeah. we're going to fight. And you're saying like, wait a minute, what about me? How, how, you know, you're battling with the loss and yes. he's fighting on. He is fighting on. And that's something that, you know, each of us, we have to struggle individually with the Lord. Lord, what do I do with this? How do I handle this? But God is so faithful, you know. It, this, the most personal part of Psalm 23 is when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. It becomes mm. very intimate. And so, you know, when there's something about the process of losing someone that is so close to you that brings you into a new walking with Jesus. It's just amazing. It deepens your faith. It mm -hmm. strengthens you. You know, you can't know him as the shepherd until you need him to lead you. You yeah. can't know him as the comforter until you need to be comforted. Right. I love that. Do you feel that as you emerge from that space is kind of like into this, okay, Lord, I've made peace with this. Do you feel like um, you felt like you were also giving up a part of, you know, your husband? I think people tie guilt a lot of times with, with that process of healing. Did you experience that? Yes. I mean, one thing that I think is really good when you're grieving is to go to something like Grief Share, which is a national organization mm -hmm. where you can watch yep. all these videos and learn about the process. And one part of grief that's super common is guilt. Because mm -hmm. you always think, well, wh it, what if I could have done this better? Or, yes. you know, yes. uh, it's just hard to accept. Uh, the loss of someone and what was your responsibility. Yeah. And so, you know, God just, he's a source, the total source of consolation. Yeah. And he's the one that gives us that peace that, Amen. so, you know, but yeah, I did go through that. And I just thank God for my husband. I mean, when you're married, you're one. Yes. And so it's very jarring and traumatic to lose that part of yourself. And you have to totally kind of come to the Lord and say, okay, who am I now? And how are we going to go forward in this adventure together? And, and that's how your song that you're about to perform for us, it would not be apropos to have you here and not sing for us, Walk With Me, because now the hand you were holding is no longer there, but mm -hmm. now you're taking the hand of Jesus. Amen. And so we're real excited. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment here, she's going to be performing for us walk with me and listen i want you to hear the lyrics one of the things that she says in the lyrics of this song is that you don't even have to give me all of the answers and as long as you your hand is in jesus hand there is a tomorrow so ladies and gentlemen be blessed by honey tree as she sings walk with me walk with me cuz i valley of shadow I'm not asking you to explain the reason for my loss and pain just take me by Find a holy dignity and 
walking by your side. There's wisdom and security. Our companionship will be a beautiful legacy. And we will comfort others. Comfort others. We will comfort others with the comfort we receive. Welcome back to Unscripted Faith. We have been having the pleasure of sitting down with Honey Tree. And if you got to listen to that song, we pray that it encouraged you. There's so much more of that that you can get actually if you go to honeytree.org. That is the title song from her most recent album. We have been so blessed to sit with you, Honey Tree. And as we're listening and being ministered to by your music, the question for me is, was that therapy for you? And has it always been that way? Yeah, I mean, songwriting has always been therapeutic because I'm expressing my heart and then the Lord takes that and uses it to minister to others, which is super affirming yes. to me. But um, I couldn't write anything for four years after my husband died. Wow. I had ideas, but I didn't. The creative process takes a lot of energy and grief takes a lot of energy. Yes. And so I couldn't complete anything. But I really, when I was able to write that song, that was the first one that I wrote after my husband died. And I just felt that's a breakthrough for me because wow. I also, actually this is kind of interesting because I wrote it originally in Spanish. Over the years I've learned to sing and speak Spanish and I work with a grief recovery ministry online called Legado de Acompañamiento. And it's uh, all in Spanish, and it's available to anyone from any. Why did you do Spanish? Well, I mean, years ago in the 90s, my, a missionary friend uh, inspired me to learn to sing my songs in Spanish. And when I started, I just decided I want to learn to speak because I don't want to be in a bubble of just singing and not, you know, becoming friends. And that same missionary and her husband and me and JR did all kinds of work together. And now both of our husbands have gone to be with the Lord, and she's the one that's founded this grief recovery ministry, Legado de Acompañamiento. So I wrote this song in Spanish originally because that was that's just like my 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 bunch, my grief recovery bunch right now is all of these Aww. Latinos. <laughs> <laughs> so and then but then I translated it to English, and both of them turned out to be just beautiful yes. lyrically and musically and and so I thought I've got to record this wow. and I hadn't come out with an album for 18 years but you know the Lord all of a sudden so he really is using this experience to re fire me up about writing and recording and so yeah we just now shipped to me uh, this new CD called Walk With Me, and the whole basis of the CD is grief recovery. Wow. Well, if I would have known, I would have asked you to sing part of it in English and then part of it in <laughs> Spanish <laughs> now, but... I'll, well, I'll sing a little bit right now. Yeah. yeah. Acompáñame, no puedo sola atravesar el valle de lágrimas no requiero que alguien me dé la respuesta a mi gran porqué. Solo toma mi mano, toma mi mano, toma mi mano, caminaremos por fe. 
Wow. It's better in Spanish, actually. It, it, it sounds really good. It's beautiful. It, it, See, ladies and gentlemen, this is unscripted faith. Yes. <laughs> unscripted honey tree is here. Yes. You know, and it's so great to see you smiling now and doing well. Yes. Tell us about life now for you and how God has walked with you and where you're headed. Well, he's just opening up all kinds of doors. Um, I, I still sing honey tree concerts. Um, just um, when people invite me to come and uh, do my songs from the Jesus movement and the newer things. But I work in Spanish a lot, so I'm working with the Grief Recovery Ministry. And we get together in person. So I just recently went to Mexico for a staff retreat and uh, was hanging out with my, my, <laughs> my Latino sisters, you know. Aww. And uh, then uh, God has done a marvelous thing where uh, I have been singing also in the Urdu language of Pakistan. Wow. And I have a song called Call of the Harvest, which is very Pakistani sounding. Wow. And uh, a young worship leader in Karachi, Pakistan, has recently made a new version of, of it. And we have done it as a duet. Come so on. his name is Zubin Ernest, and he's a tremendous Christian worship leader. But when he first heard Call of the Harvest, he was 14 years old. Wow. That's when I released it over there. Is in, that on Walk With Me? Too? No, How it's not. It? It's on a, an album called Call of the Harvest, okay. which Call of the Harvest. Yeah. can be found on honeytree.org. But I recorded it in English, Spanish, and Urdu, which was quite a... <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> which was quite an adventure. Yes. And then, so he was 14 when he first heard Call of the Harvest. And it's a very missionary. It's Jesus saying, the harvest is great, the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord to send forth harvest laborers. Yes. And so he got in touch with me a couple of years ago and I looked him up. You know, he's got all these fabulous songs on YouTube and it's, he's a great artist. And he said, I really want to do your song. I said, go for it. So he recorded a whole new version of it, did it in Karachi. But then he said, I want you to sing with me. Oh, wow. So I went to the studio in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where I live, and recorded my duet, you know, yes. with him. And he mixed it all together. Then he said, I want a video. <laughs> and so I stood in front of a white curtain and sang my part. And then he edited it into this fantastic video. So anybody who wanted to see it, it's Call of the Harvest, Zub and Ernest, and it's just fabulous. But he's invited me to come, so I'm actually going to go to Pakistan I and love do that. a honey tree concert in Karachi. Listen, like you said, when we started, once a hippie, always a hippie, yeah, girl, exactly. you find yourself all over the globe spreading the love of Jesus. Amen, amen. Girl, I love it. Truly the first lady of Jesus music, and we are so honored that you yes. sat down with us, but we want you to share with us another one of your songs. Yes. This song that Honey Tree sings comes from, it's Revelation 320, and that's the title of it. Today, you may be watching and feeling like the Lord is knocking on your heart. Maybe he's dealing with you in a space of grief, or perhaps he's calling you to greater purpose in new spaces. Whatever it is, we say, Holy Spirit, come. Let's invite him as we listen to Honey Tree sing Revelation 320. your heart Behold I stand at the door Listen I'm knocking at your heart If any man shall hear my voice and open
this program is ministering to you and you feel the Lord knocking at your heart, but you would love to talk with someone, we invite you to call our prayer line at 888-665-4483 or email us at prayer at ctvn.org. You know, Jay, I love that song that he stands at the door knocking. That's right. I know that you've gone through your own personal Without journey with grief and it's been a challenging one. Can you yeah. share a little bit with us? Well, you know, it's funny since we've been on Unscripted Faith, it seems like everybody's knowing my business. <laughs> I mean, I'm, every time I feel like I'm in a counselor's chair over here and I'm like, man, I'm sorry, I'm putting out all my laundry. But, uh, you know, I, we, we want to make sure everybody understands too, even though we talk about grief, there's another side to this. And I remember I was praying for people. My mother would be in the service while she was struggling with breast cancer praying for, there was one person that was autistic, had never spoken any words, prayed for him. That day he spoke, he began to start speaking using words. And I was praying over my mother. We had people gathering around her and she was getting worse. You know, I'm living right from God, with God. I'm doing all of these things. I'm pastoring a church. I'm keeping myself pure, all these things. And I'm like, how in the world is this happening to me? And then my mm. mother dies. And I remember in the middle of all of that, God spoke two words to me. You know, what's amazing mm. is that no matter what we battle with, there's always a word from God in Come grief. On. He never leaves you. He doesn't Come forsake on. you. No matter where you are, there's always God ready to speak a word to you. Yes. And he spoke two words to me, think praise. Ooh. And because I was thinking negatively about wow. God, I was thinking that it's not working for my good. He's a bad God. He's this, that, and a third. And God said, think praise about me because all things work together. That was wow. my word, just yeah. how honey trees word was this song, Walk yes, With Me. Yes. But the reality is God is standing at the door of our hearts, even yes. in seasons like this, willing to speak to us. And he can speak one word, Angela, Yes. one word. Come For on. me, it was two, Come on. think praise. And that has stuck with me. My mother's been gone now 17 years and I'm doing better than ever. I don't think about her every day. Yes. And I, when my, my memories of her are fond, yes. but it's been healed. And I thank God that now my memories are ones of joy yes. and not of sorrow. There are times when it comes and goes, of course. but ultimately though, God is a good God. So Jay, when you say think praise, was that the phrase that pulled you out of like this, oh, he got healed and my mom died. Is that what got you kind of unstuck? It did, yeah, because God was saying, think praise about me. You know, wow. think about me, that everything I do is praiseworthy. Even if wow. you can't understand it. What if my mother would have lived another 10 years and backslid? How do wow. we know? We don't always know. We, only, we see this little small view of what's happening, but we don't wow. consider, you know, it could be like Hezekiah. I don't oh. wanna die, I don't wanna die. 10 years later, he turned out worse than when he would have <laughs> left the first time. Yep. So we have to trust God. And that's what he said, think praise about me. Think that I'm praiseworthy in all things and in every situation. And that's what changed me. And uh, it got me through it. And now I share my story as her song yes, says, now yes. we'll share it to comfort somebody else. Yes. And if I can get through it, everyone else can get through it as well. Come on, Jay, I love that. Amen. I think it's so powerful. You know, I went through a difficult moment when I was a youth pastor and a, a, a kid under my watch um, nearly lost his life. And just that short period in time when we thought 
it's going to be real bad. I was so consumed with guilt that I didn't think I would ever come out of it and really thought like, this is the end of my life. Like I'm done, you know? And what's so powerful is that in the darkest moment of my own journey, I found his peace to be so pervasive. And I think that when you're saying God's got a word for us, I think each and every one of us need to be listening to that word. Even when grief, grief consumes you, even when guilt is choking you out, God's got a word that will sustain your life. And a lot of times what people don't think about too, when he did creation, we always think that we think day and night are a day. The Bible says the evening and the morning were the first day. So sometimes when you're in the darkest hour of your life, that's actually the time that God is doing a new thing. Death is not the end, That's it's it. rather the beginning. That's it, that is the good news of Jesus, you know? When we see and they saw the death of Christ, when they saw him behind that tomb, they thought, oh no, it's over, we've lost him. But there is a Sunday that came and brought the That's greatest right. resurrection ever that has given us the power to rise above the ashes and the dirt of this world. Today, there is unprecedented grace and hope for you. Continue to grow. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.